In this video, we're going to take a look at a brown ink in the Pilot Mixable series, Sepia. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really does help the channel out if you check out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the brown ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, no spread, no shading in any of this writing. Now the extra fine does look a little bit lighter than the medium, and the medium looks a little lighter than the stub. The extra fine took 16 seconds to dry, while the medium took 19. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and there is none in the writing. The smear test says you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Nimesine Fission with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. Now we have no bleeding that's coming through and touching the page, but look at what's going on with the stub. That is very deep into the page, almost coming through. Well, we have a lot of ghosting, but it's thin paper. We have no feather, no spread, no shading. The extra fine looks lighter than the medium, and the medium just a hair lighter than the stub. The extra fine took 18 seconds to dry, while the medium took 29. Scrubby for both give us no color variation, we get none in the writing, and the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita, there's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this is a very dark purple that does immediately form a line on the bottom and then it pushes up and really gathers dark towards the top. But at the very top, we see this very nice golden yellow color. The one on the right that's allowed to dry for 10 minutes, that purple line on the bottom is darker and more there, and the purple moving up is moving much more evenly. The yellow at the top is still very noticeable, but we do see that we may expect a little bit of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia Dop Head. No bleeding, no ghosting except some in the stub. Curious, right? We've seen a couple of their mixable inks do that. Now we have no feather, no spread, no shading in any of this writing. The extra fine again is the lightest tone with the medium and the stub being the same very dark tone. Extra fine took 15 seconds to dry while medium took 19. Scrubby for both give no color variation. We get no shading in the writing and the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would not use this in a note-taking situation. That lowercase h has a lot of blowout. That would concern me. Now, water's lifting all the darkest tones, but still leaving quite a bit of this ink there on the paper. And pen flush, if you look at the very top on the edge, you do see that you start getting the very beginning bits of white of the paper coming through. Now, it did only take water to get this out of my pen. The one-third bleach solution is removing most all of this ink, but not all of it, which was very surprising to me, but you're not going to need it to clean this from your pen. The next writing sample is done on life paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. No feather, no spread, no shading. We do get tone variation that the extra fine's lighter than the medium that is the same tone as the stub. The extra fine took 14 seconds to dry and the medium 19. Scrubby for both give us no color variation because there's none in the writing. And the smear test, you may be able to recover if you smear while you're writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Pilot's Mixable Sipia has a viscosity of 1.73, so this is a wet ink. The next writing sample is done on Levenger paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. No feather, no spread, no shading. 
only a little tone variation from the extra fine, which is lighter than the medium. That's the same tone as the stub. The extra fine took five seconds to dry and the medium took seven. Scrubby for both give us no color variation. There's none in this ink at all. And the smear test, you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Pilot's Mixable Sepia has an average dry time of 19 seconds, so it's normal. The last writing sample is done on Franklin Kristoff paper. No bleeding, no ghosting, no feather, no spread, no shading. This is a very straightforward ink. They do get tone variation. The extra fine is lighter than the medium and the stub, which are the same tone. Extra fine took three seconds to dry and medium took five. Scrubby for both gave no color variation and there's none in the writing. And the smear test, you might be able to recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Pilot's Mixable Sepia, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. What you don't know is it took me like six times to say the word prefer correctly. It was killing me. I went with a green ink by Monteverdi, their Olivine, because I was feeling in an earth tone kind of mood. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Pilot's Mixable Sepia? As a writing ink, I hate it. As a mixing ink, it's very dominating being so dark. You're gonna need to dilute it about one part ink to three parts water, at least, just to be able to actually use it on your inks and not sort of make them too dark. Just to tone this down, it's gonna take a lot of work. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? In order to really tone this down, you're gonna to need to use a very dry, fine, or extra fine pen. Otherwise, it's just so incredibly dark, it almost looks like it's more of a black than a brown. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Sailor Kobe number 17.